So, Carl, the last time any of us in this part of the country saw you, you were uh, running across the start finish line, a la Ricky Bobby. <laughs> First question. When you go back to a track like Talladega and you've had an accident like that, do you think about it? And then secondly, what do you think about what NASCAR has done to make the cars run a little safer, a little slower at Talladega? Well, the, I guess, uh, you know, glad to be familiar to your uh, to your audience there. I wish it was for something other than uh, flying into the fence upside down. But, um, but yeah, we, uh, you know, we've got a, a great subway fusion this weekend and, I'm hoping that I'm fast enough to uh, to stay off of that guy's bumper at the end and, and maybe win the race. But as far as NASCAR's steps to, you know, to keep that from happening, there's really nothing that NASCAR can do aside from just letting these race cars run 230 miles an hour out here that's going to keep them from from being bunched up. You know, uh, with the restrictor plates, everyone's wide open on the floor, and the cars, because of the draft, just stay together. So uh, a little smaller restrictor plates what's NAS is what NASCAR has done, and I believe it's... It's just going to keep us even tighter together, but we'll be going at a slower rate of speed, so maybe we won't get airborne if we get sideways. The fans obviously like this kind of racing. The drivers seem to not so much. Yeah. How do you feel about restricted plate racing? Well, I, I've been on both sides of it as a fan. I mean, I was glued to the television set. I, you know, you watching these races is uh, you're you're just you're watching the impending doom. You know, something's going to happen, and uh, you know you just don't know what it's going to be. As a driver, obviously, it's a little bit different. Um, you know, it's it's very nerve-wracking. You know, um, the cars are very, very safe. Um, you know, way safer than they've ever been. So that's good. But still, no no driver wants to drive around just waiting to be in a wreck. So, um, you know, it's, it's really tough. You know, to win would be great, but uh, usually everyone else is a little bit frustrated. There are basically two schools of thought when you come to a place like Daytona or Talladega. One is to run up front and try to stay in front of the wreck. The other is to lag way back right. and try to stay behind it. What do you like to do? It depends on where you're at. If you know, if if they drop the green flag and and I drive down the corner and and you know my subway car is thirtieth, it's uh. It's sure tough to race for 29th, you know, on the first lap, and that's where you have to decide. If, if you're up front, of course, I mean, you go out there and you try to stay in front of the whole pack, lead the most laps, and, and stay out front, but there's just no way to – it's so chaotic. There's no way to guarantee that you can stay in front. So, uh, you know, I've seen the leaders wreck at these places, so it's it's tough. You just have to – you get a sense kind of what's going on around you, and uh, you can tell – You I personally get nervous – you know, when I see certain things happen, and I think, oh, I'm going to stay away from those guys. And, uh, you know, and sometimes I'm that guy. So, I, you know, it's just, uh, it's tough. you got to take it as it comes. L let's talk a little bit about your season. Last year you led the series in victories. This year you haven't gotten a win yet. You are in the chase, but you're kind of in that nebulous in-between land. You're in the top ten, but you're not really close right. enough to catch Jimmy Johnson. How do you approach the rest of the season? Right. It's, it's really tough as a driver. I mean, I feel like I'm better than I was last year. I'm doing the same things that, that I was doing last year. And last year we won nine races, scored more points than anyone, more top fives, more top, top tens. And it seemed very easy. And um, this shows you how tough this sport can be and the, the ups and downs, you know, for everyone but Jimmy, because obviously he's done great, you know, for the last four years. But um, for the rest of us, uh, well, you know, what I have to do personally is just go out there and do my very best, just like anyone. Um, you know, you just do the best you can. You take what you, what's, you know, what's given. But, I'd love to have, you know, six or eight wins right now. So what we're trying to do is just you – know, we made a conscious decision to go out here and just race hard the last few races, try to get wins, try to have some fun. And real quickly here, because i got to go, one last question before my time's up. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the 48. They seem to be so dominant. What do you as a competitor and the rest of the guys in the garage area have to do to catch him? Well, you know, obviously the, the 48 team, Jimmy Johnson, those guys, they, they are doing a great job. And so the, the only way to, to beat them, I, I think there's it's two steps. Number one, you know, emulate them, figure out where they're beating you and try to become as good as them at that. And then, you know, move beyond what they're doing and try to find something that they don't have. And last year there was there was a big portion of the year where we, we'd figured some things out that they did not have. And, and it was, you know, relatively easy to outrun them at that point. But, uh, you know, if those guys are, are equal with you, they're, they're very tough to beat. So, um, you know, we're just, we're just doing the best we can.